a true friend, a professional colleague, Dr. Rohan Jola, who readily said to me, Sylvia, for you, of course, I'll be there. For your faculty, of course, I'll be willing to share. And I must say to you, I really respect what he, he's done today because Florida, he's based in Florida. And Florida is really waiting to see what they... So I'm so appreciative that, that he's here. And I wish you well if the, the, the hurricane braces Florida. I wish all of you, you know, well throughout. But I must say that the Caribbean is at the heart. It's at my heart. And I'm delighted to talk to you about generative AI and critical thinking, because I think we are at a point that we need to have some deeper discussion. And when I say deeper discussion, I'm really talking about the fact that sometimes when I go to places, I tend to hear the practically that they are the same wavelength, but they have not moved the compass a bit. But we in the Caribbean, we cannot delay because what is happening is that on a global scale, we'll have to address what we have to do in order to stay competitive. So I love to get off the movement by saying to you at this point in time, I don't have all the answers, but I can give you the landscape of where it is. I can give you the landscape of where it started and somewhat guide our critical thoughts this afternoon. But a question was asked in one of the documents Dr. Henry sent over today. It asked about the importance of academic integrity. And you know, wherever I go, the importance of this aspect comes to mind. I've addressed it at every session I've gone and I've put this slide in to show you that this is a dominant thought in upholding academic integrity. And I start with this point because I want to do the heavy lifting in this presentation early to allow us to really consider other aspects. When we think about honor in the age of AI and algorithms, we have to understand too that cheating has existed a long time ago. From the days that they started formal education, some people just didn't want to work harder or some people thought they could get away by doing things. Even at when I was doing my teacher training, we went to the library to find one book that the teacher had recommended and that book was on the shelf without the page. Someone had ripped out that page and the one person that did the assignment was recognized by the teacher and told by the teacher to return that page to the library. What I'm saying is that we are at a stage that computer and AI has now pushed the whole academic integrity on another level that we have to understand that the very qualification that students have because of generative AI could become problematic within their professional zone. I was asking my daughter before this presentation, how do you use ChatGPT? She said, I just put it in and I get a response. I said, well, where is your thinking as it relates to that? So we are at a point now that we have students being able to get a B or a C. And getting the A is going to distinguish that they have critically given consideration to what you've asked. They have made the connection to your, of course, assignment brief, your, of course, course materials, and of course, videos and discussions and in class lectures that you have done. So when we look at changing the landscape, we have to think about being creative. And I started with this point because I wanted us at this point to understand that we are the zone. When artificial intelligence came in and you know, when it arrived and everyone had access because it was there before, initial thing by universities were of course to ignore it. It's not going to affect us. But when they realized that students were using it, and of course faculty started using it, there was an immediate of course need to ban. Ban the use of artificial intelligence. And of course they went away. They came up with some ideas. You know what? We can use software. But as the software was built to identify those AI generated text. So did the other hand, the creation of another software that could set it in such a way that the AI detection software could not work. The reality is that there's no software out there that can definitively say that that is AI produced content based on what happens. There has been lawsuits regarding people being accused of AI content when in fact they have documented evidence that they produce the work. 
So the next stage was to invigilate that generative content that they think they could do, you know, having invigilation and everything. And of course, there's a thought that is out there in some countries based on the cheating level. They had drones flying over exam rooms to ensure that nothing was going on that is out of the context. And the next stage was for individuals to say, you know what? We're going to embrace the technology. Let's embrace it. But as they embraced it, they realized that the teaching styles that they had inherited for the last hundred and so years remain the same. So what they did was to, of course, redesign. And even redesigning, that was critical because some of them were redesigning but did not understand the full context of artificial intelligence and what aspects could be created. So today I want to take you on a journey because as we take a look at the, where we should be, we have to rethink how we design our assessments. We have to think how we are going to design our content because content is now fluid. We can update information within seconds and that's where we are. So when someone talks about how are we going to ensure academic integrity and ownership of work, we have to really rethink how we have designed, how we have assessed over the period of time. And what are we going to do to ensure that technology and the use of technology that is going to push the Caribbean is consistent in the sense that it enhances the productivity of that assignment as well as leads students and faculty members into a pathway that both can work harmoniously. Notice I've not said we should not use it because it's going to be here to say, stay. And if we don't, we're not going to be competitive. Hence, a collaboration is needed. So as I go through that, I want to take you on another journey where I say to myself, you can have assessment scale where you have no AI. You can use AI to have ideas. You can use AI to edit something. You can use AI and human evaluation or full scale AI. These are some thoughts regarding assessments, but I don't want to spend too much time on assessment because we have a lot to do and that would be for another session. This was for an hour that I talked about that, but I thought it important based on the question that was asked to respond to that individual as well as others thinking about it. Think about redesigning your assessment. And I go forward because this slide represents the opening of my actual presentation where I'm going to talk about the emergence of generative AI content. So I want us to look at the next item that I have. And I want to play this because this is, of course, our theme song. We had a theme song before, but I'm going to release it to this one now as we go through. And let's listen to it. Let your mind glow Think it through, let brilliance show Critical thoughts come and grow Hey, I know, yeah, we guide the way Input the data, learn every day Insight in hand in the light we play Knowledge expanding, can't betray Think it through, think it strong And I'm going to stop there because that song was created by AI. All I did was a critical prompt I added. And then I asked it to put the song in a sort of Caribbean music. I did not specify the country because I just wanted a song. I wanted to start off by showing that AI generated content can be in music. It can be, of course, in a video form. It can be used in images and text. So when we think about everything, we have to understand that generative AI is a type of artificial intelligence that generates information from a prompt and the output can be video, it can be text, it can be audio. In other words, you have something in your pocket, on your phone or on your computer that can create something and it can create something that makes sense as well as it doesn't. And that is where the critical thinking comes along. And as I go through, there is a debate about ownership, and that will take us to another session. Who owns that content that is created by AI? Some countries have stipulated that that content is owned by the individual with that prompt. But I want to 
go back a bit because you know what when it comes down to content generation for example i'll use an example here if you turned up with your child or granddaughter or grandson to a teacher that you have taught sometime along at your university and you know that the teacher had plagiarized all day long yes the teacher was classified as one of these individuals who was brought up to the front of the academic board for plagiarism and of course got several chances but somehow you know what the system allowed that individual based on what's happening to go through of course they would have passed of course you'd say if you left your daughter or granddaughter there that's all right for now right yeah that's all right but if you went to the doctor's office and you saw someone who you went to university with who was actually one of the individuals that you know cheated their way out and they're about to do a medical examination i'm sure you would move away the issue is when it comes on to academic integrity the very profession that we try to ensure it's safe we need to consider those elements but I want us to imagine the vibrant Caribbean Sea. There's a forest around and the ocean is there, but you are on a vessel and the vessel is being guided by AI. Yes, that AI system has the map, but for you to navigate, it's going to create the need for critical thinking. You must think critically as you navigate. And while I'm touching on teaching and learning, I want to see that the Caribbean element that we have depends on critical thinking in relation to AI. When we look at, of course, tourism, when I come to Jamaica, I have to put on my, or the Caribbean, I have to put on my critical application, my critical thinking, because those algorithms are driving information to me. And I have to make that decision. Am I being targeted based on my location? Because there are algorithms that do that and they're pushing content towards me. When you look at agriculture, we have to ensure that the population that we have, they are literate enough to understand that they can use AI powered tools to monitor their crop. And of course, to predict diseases based on pictures. As a matter of fact, what we can do now, we can label anything based on what has done for, by other companies like Amazon, when they have practically, I could, you could take a picture of me and it would label everything and describe me in all text. We think about healthcare critical thinking. It's necessary for us to ensure that those who are developing products that for the Caribbean are aware. And of course, the financial group. We have to teach the aspect of critical thinking or else we have problems in our very financial set settings. So when we think about critical thinking, it's not just a one part that you think about academic. You're thinking about every aspect. With an AI-driven Caribbean landscape, we must harness and enhance critical thinking or else we're going to be left behind. Let me say at no time at all have I ever found myself in the last six years without using a tool that is connected with some algorithm or AI system. Because I could talk as much today, but until you start playing around with these tools, exploring these tools, then you know their limitations. We have to understand that as we move along, we have to build a relationship with humans and, of course, ourselves and AI. And this is going to be necessary with critical thinking. Without that, we won't be standing a chance as it relates to AI. But when we define critical thinking, I think Professor Moore touched on this earlier. It's about critically assessing things, analyzing, evaluating. And with AI, you have to do that. There's no other way around. AI is a convincing liar. And I said it. Yes. Many individuals have coined the word hallucination. I don't use that word. Because AI, when it tells you a lie, it is convincing. And when it tells you something truthful that you can test, it's also convincing. It means that critical thinking is the only way to assess the evidence. There's no going around. So when we start... Of we must think about critical thinking and the critical thinking must be connected with our cultural context or histories that we have in the Caribbean. Thank you. So when we think about the issue of critical thinking, we have to understand the need to identify biases in text, identify bias in the very music. We cannot go around, but we have to question the assumptions. We need to ask ourselves what point is the AI system coming from? And we need to say to ourselves, 
we need to address this. For example, let me say that you live on a beautiful island of Barbados. And of course, the reality is someone wants to find out about Barbados. I wouldn't ask about the Caribbean. If I ask about Barbados, it must be a specific item about Barbados. It should not be about anything else except, except it's specific. And that's important. As we go through, I want to take you on a journey because I think I must empower you that there are powerful tools that can get you engaged in your critical thoughts. And why do I say that? I have created roughly 90 plus GPTs. These GPTs hold my thoughts. These are critical prompts. These prompts have sat down and I've made them connect to theory, connect to certain things and so forth. And in doing that, for example, I did study language and literacy. I made a connection to my field of study, created a critical prompt, and of course, was able to have my own personal GPT. There are possibilities out there that you can use your own chat GPT to design assignments that will consider AI and how to get students involved in such a way that they're doing the work. There are so many things, and I have an app for that too. I have roughly 90 plus apps. So when we look at it too, we have to understand that this one is going to create a worksheet. It's going to analyze phonetics, um, phonology, and so forth for the student. In that too, moving at, at a pace, I want to say that the prompt is extensive. I've written this section here, and it's extensive, as I'll show you now. This is just one of my thoughts, and you can see it's extensive, it will pull down. So therefore, when you ask about critical thinking, it's not just putting in a single sentence. It's articulating exactly what you want. And by articulating what you want, because you're going through that critical process, you get something. When we think about AI, it will help us to reduce all repetitive tasks. And that can be done through prompting. It can go through an aspect of complex thinking. For example, I could ask it a question and ask it to solve a problem and then I could read and see how it has gone by responding. But within that context too, there is an aspect of fostering ethics as we get the information. And that requires critical thinking. We can't just take AI at its word because it will fabricate. It's not hallucinating. It's just fabricating. And why do we need critical thinking? Because in our society today, we have challenges. This morning, I saw a video online. I looked at it only to realize that every aspect of that was created from other scenes across the world to present the, and havoc, present the havoc in the Caribbean and, of course, South Florida with the hurricane. Nothing like that happened. So, therefore... When we look at the challenges based on the information of generative AI, we can say to ourselves, currently, I'm going to say this, it's a strong statement, I don't see the Caribbean being fully represented in the AI-generated content that is being produced. We have inherited and using systems that have connection to North America and their data sets, and the data sets are very biased here. So what we're going to get when we generate content is something that is not like us. It's not for us until we can get our data sets in. For example, facial recognition. We might be using data sets from North America to do our own security checks. When I fly down to Jamaica and I'm going up, they say it's a random check by TSA two months in a row that I'm pulled over and I'm check checked because of the name. So therefore, there are some data sets that are tainted with some algorithms that are set in relation to boundaries. There's an issue of deep fake. So when we think about these things, the only way to navigate this is by really reflecting and understanding that, listen, without a critical thinking and, of course, understanding the problems that exist, we won't be able to manage. I want to tell you that there are some individuals in our society today that are unable to tell the difference between an AI-generated voice and one that is just like mine. So if that is taking place, we're going to have, have some problems. And AI is getting better. But as we go forward, we must understand that we have to foster critical thinking. 
Each country in the Caribbean must have the basic understanding. We have to understand that AI requires us to think critically, to understand that the content produced should always be viewed as something that is produced in doubt. Remember, some of the content that's generated is biased. This could impact our Caribbean culture. It could rewrite our histories in our Caribbean. So we must have an ethical dimension that we walk towards. I've created 40 principles as it relates to artificial intelligence and I put them in five categories. One of the dominant categories that I have, of course, is ethics. But as I wrap up, I think it's important to showcase the power of artificial intelligence. And by doing this, I'm going to pass it over to Mary. And Mary is just going to give the summary of the session and, of course, hand it over back to the moderator. At this point, I pass it over to Mary, who's going to take Thank Dr. Jawala. I will do the summary. Hello everyone, I am Mary and I am an avatar which is driven by AI. My apology for not having an accent associated with the Caribbean. The tech companies are working on this for greater inclusion. Now, let me get back to Dr. Jawala's conclusion. Like Dr. Jawala said, in the Caribbean context, critical thinking is essential alongside AI. AI, when properly guided by human judgment, can produce positive localized outcomes tailored to the region. Dr. Jawala also talked about the synergy between AI and critical thinking. The combination of AI's potential and human critical thinking forms a powerful partnership. His message highlighted collaboration, not competition, between AI and human intelligence. Dr. Jawala wants to encourage everyone in the audience to nurture critical thinking skills, and to be active participants in shaping AI's future in the Caribbean. One key pathway is the development of critical AI literacy for all. Dr. Jawala would like to leave you with the thought that critical thinking remains the region's greatest asset in the age of AI, ensuring that technology serves humanity and fosters wisdom across the Caribbean's vibrant islands. Thank you all for attending this session. I will now turn it over to the moderator. Mary, wow. Um, all I can say is it's a whole new world. It's a whole new world. And uh, only through conversations like, like, like these, we can really start to understand what is before us. Um, you have stimulated critical thought. You have enlightened us. You barely scratched the surface because I know there's a whole lot. And um, we've had some questions coming in. And it really says that we need to have a deeper conversation on issues like assessment and so on. But you've enlightened us. And you've left us yearning for more discussion. Um, I invite all persons here, if you have your conferences and so on, that you can, you, you should consider inviting Dr. Jawala to be your keynote because there's a whole lot more. And I also invite you to join, to subscribe to his YouTube channel. Um, he has a wide, um, a, a lot of topics, variety of topics that will interest you.